Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. I'm here joined by an uh, old friend of the program, podcaster, hilarious person, uh, Ray Kump is with us. Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, getting over COVID-19, baby, I finally got it. Were you? Did you eat a pangolin? I, I don't know how I got it, but I just... Um, it was probably just because every everybody I know has it. Everyone in LA has it. It's this but you're vaccinated, so it's, it's well, you know it's, it's helping you. I mean, you know what's so funny <laughs> is no, you could tell that no one has any trust in the vaccine because as right. soon as you tell people you have it, they're like, "Oh my god, yeah. oh my god," and I'm like, "Well, I'm vaccinated. I'm supposed to be okay, right?" They're like, "Dude, be careful." Literally, people were texting me. They're like, "Be careful." I'm like. And these are the same people that were like, you got to get faxed. <laughs> as soon as you get it, they're like, how long do you have? Yeah. They're like, it's my aunt's texting me. She's like, it's scary. It's very scary. I'm like, I thought the whole idea was that you got the vaccine so that you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be inundated with texts. Like are your affairs in order? No one wants people are addicted to the death drama now. Yes. No one, we can't go back. We're not, we're not going to go back to like, you know, occasionally someone dies and we're fine. We just live our lives. If people don't have a death every day to talk about or someone dying or someone in the hospital, they're going to lose their minds. It gives is, their lives is, meaning. Yeah. It we're, gives we're, their we're life culture now. Yeah. It's a death culture. It's a good point. And what's interesting about um, having this is it is, you know, worrisome, you know, you try to stay off the internet when you have it. Right. Because there's always like a case, there'll always be something to read about where you go, Oh fuck. You know? Right. Um, some, there's, there's always someone who's died of everything, like right. everything out there you could die of someone has. Right. And what's interesting about COVID now is people act like it's the only thing killing people in America. Right. Like, it's the only thing. This is a country, okay, that has mass shootings, an insanely high homicide rate, an opioid crisis, school shootings all the time, uh, insane rates of cancer, heart disease, all kinds of problems, um, suicide, PTSD, untreated mental illness, horrible roads, traffic accidents. But w people act like COVID is just the only danger out there. Cops are finding hookers with like their throats cut. Going, look, oh, COVID's getting nasty. <laughs> which var which variant is this? Yeah, which variant is this? Where I shoot an innocent black guy in a Seven Eleven parking lot? <laughs> what variant is that? I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, I went. So I went. I got this monoclonal antibody infusion, which really helps. It's the same thing they gave to Trump. And, right. uh, you know, being bigger now, I'm, I'm going to try to really lose weight now because this is not going anywhere, COVID, clearly. And it's I just going to be you already around. survived COVID. Why lose the weight? Well, I just think it's still, <laughs> a, it's a better idea. I got to prepare for whatever the next variant is going to be. Sure. The next variant is going to be like this. How, the, it's going to be hilarious. You're going to be like, not only does the vaccine not help the next variant, it hurts. <laughs> like, <laughs> They're going to be like, are you vaccinated? Well, then the next variant's going to fuck you up. Watch the fuck out. <laughs> right. So uh, I, I went and I got this monoclonal antibody infusion. It's made by a company called Regeneron, which is um, the thing that Trump got. Now, I don't know why it's not widely available. It is kind of like a miracle drug. I feel much better in, in under 48 hours. Really, well, I felt better in 24 hours. I mean, it's hard to mass produce when you're based out of uh, Argentina using old Nazi science. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> but what's good about Texas is all the doctors here are QAnon. So they'll literally, right. they'll do anything, right? <laughs> like when I went in, the doctor's like, did you get vaxxed? I was like, yeah. He was like, all right. Like he wasn't like good for you or he goes, ah, all right. So right. Like, and then he goes like this. He goes, you want some ivermectin? And I went, <laughs> well, I don't know. And he goes, how about this? He calls me up. He goes, why don't you go to a website? It's going to tell you all about the ivermectin. He didn't even say, like, he didn't say what ivermectin is. He's just like, he goes, like, like, he's like, watch the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, have you seen Zeitgeist? <laughs> uh, no, he, he, he goes, he calls me, he goes, how are you doing after the antibodies? I said, good. 
Uh, he goes, okay, because you want some ivermectin. And I went, well, I don't really know. I'm like, I don't know that I need it. I feel better. He goes, listen, just go to this website and it'll tell you all about it. He goes, these doctors, he goes, they're highly peer reviewed. He goes, they're well published. He goes, they're well known. And he goes, so I go to the website and, and I'm not saying anything about ivermectin. I'm sure it, it, it has success and the people that believe it or whatever. But like Brett Weinstein's being interviewed on this website. <laughs> Brett Weinstein's not a doctor, though. He's not a doctor. Like he's not, he's a, he perhaps a doctor of something, but whatever. He's like not a doctor. So it's very <laughs> interesting. Like what? So I'm Is looking at the YouTube at, link. It's. <laughs> <laughs> I, if you want to take ivermectin, link in bio. Yeah, no, it's it's literally a fucking. I forget what it's called. It's called. It's like the COVID Coalition or something. Oh, that's. that's I forget the name of it. I I wish I had the name of it right. And it's like the um. Let me try to find it. And uh, it's a website where they just have all these different. Is Gary V on there? Okay, it's called COVIDCriticalCare.com. FLCCC Alliance, Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance. We thank you for your continued support. This is starting to remind me of the mortgage crisis. So if you go to this, it just <laughs> is like a bunch of interviews with people. And one of them is Dr. Pierre Corey and Paul Marek discuss this suppression of good science and more with Brett Weinstein. Dr. Corey on how ivermectin defeats the variants, blah, blah, blah. So... It's just so funny. I was like, okay, I'd never been told by a doctor before to go to a website. You, you know why, though? It's because when the trial happens, and it's like, and so you advise Mr. Dillon to take ivermectin. No, you're, no, uh, actually, to clarify, I sent, sent him to a website. He made his own decisions. Like, there's, no, there's no doctor advice going. <clears throat> it's like he's selling you a speedball. Yeah, the doctor calls me and goes, listen, uh, we've had a lot of success with a new drug. Have you heard of the Compound Media Network? <laughs> I want you to log on to Compound Media. And uh, I mean, listen, maybe it works. I don't know. But I, I mean, I, I feel better. My oxygen levels are good. I'm walk, walking two or three miles a day. Um, Did you take the ivermectin? No, I have a script for it. I picked it up. I was like, hey, if I, if I felt bad, I was going to take it. Right. It's like seven pills a day or something. That's, that's a lot of pills. It's a lot of pills. Um, but I made it through. But you, you've never had this as far as you know. COVID? No, I'm I'm uh, I'm a very healthy man, and I've I've managed to keep it uh, keep it at bay with my uh, physical acumen. Well, and you don't leave your home. I leave occasionally. I mean, I go out to dinner. I go to the movies. I've seen four or five movies since they reopened. How 1950s of you? You're like I go to the dinner. I go to the <laughs> movies. You know? No, you but I, I, yeah, I'll walk around, and and yeah, my girlfriend uh, Lucy, she walks. You know, she leaves the house a lot. So, you know, if she caught it, I would get it. So, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I think it's not, it's not tearing through New York at the moment, but yeah, you know, I'm sure it will at some point yeah. again. The doctor calls <laughs> me back and he goes, I want you to watch a documentary. Sit down. <laughs> he goes, sit down. Do you know that Jesus, that Jesus is actually based on a Sumerian myth? <laughs> anyway, take this pill. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that Jesus was based on Horus. <laughs> Do you know that? Oh, interesting. That's very interesting. I'm like, can you take my blood pressure? He goes, sit down. Sit down and relax for a little bit, okay? You know, our money is not backed by gold. Did you know that? <laughs> it's backed by nothing. <laughs> you understand? It's like, hey, what's, what, what, are my, uh, what are my platelets uh, count yeah. look like? Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, debt is slavery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. <laughs> you know, it's the only way to keep the government in check. I'm like, I understand. Is my oxygen good? Is it <laughs> above 95? How? What? What's the... Thermite paint. <laughs> <laughs> it's also some of these doctors in Texas, you go, where did you go to school? Like, because some of them go to like Texas Christian Academy of Jesus, you know? Well, the weird thing is, like, don't a lot of them go over, like, I know like, when people come from other countries, they, like, can't, their medical license can't transfer for some reason, but, like, aren't a lot of those guys, don't they go down to, like, South America to get their licenses a lot of the times? 
Isn't there a thing where they go to Brazil where they go to like? Is that true? Some, I didn't know that. I don't know. Or, or like, or like some. I think there's like. I think there's like med schools in the Cayman Islands that like some of these guys go to. Oh my next, god! Next, next to the banks that like you know funnel the money. <laughs> I mean, listen. I'm happy though. I got the antibody infusion. Like, I am glad that they were like, let's throw everything at it. Yeah, no one's taking chances with you. No one, no one thinks you're fighting it off on your own. That's not true. I'm white. <laughs> This is disproportionately affecting people that are non-white. Because they, they don't get the uh, the blood of the children injected into them like you did. Well, I was given it because it's given... It, it, there is a group in Texas called the Society for the Preservation of White Men. And, oh, <laughs> and that's who... That's little. I'm not even kidding. That's who gave me the the infusion. That's who paid for it. What? It. That's who paid for the infusion. <laughs> I swear to you. What? Why? It's a, it's a, it's about preserving European heritage. Um, that sounds sketchy. Is it? A little bit. I'm not sure I, what we're getting out of here. <laughs> the, that's the reason I was able to get this. It said to preserve the, the lineage of Europeans. I mean, is are you really what they want to preserve? This is what this is. I don't, I don't ask, you know, <laughs> I don't ask. Um, What's going on in uh, in New York? Um, you know, it, it's 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 fine. I mean, there's a lot more uh, homeless under the overpasses now, but you know, they, they got to go somewhere. So you have a camps now under like under, on Meeker Avenue. Uh, of that, that's the biggest difference I see. Um, I have people just walking around. Some of them have masks. Some of them don't. Everyone's just kind of living their uh, living their best life. Yeah. I haven't gotten stabbed yet. No, I mean, you know, it's going to, it's going to take a while for this shit to write itself. It's very weird. And, um, it's a very strange fucking time, uh, to do anything, um, you know, or to plan anything, you know? I mean, I know that a lot of people have tour. I have a tour. I I'm pretty sure the tours are going to be okay. I think they'll just, you know, basically, uh, start requiring the vaccine everywhere as opposed to shutting things down. Right. That seems to be the direction things are heading in. Oh, mind, I have to get my Excelsior pass. What is that? New York, the Excelsior pass is your proof, I guess, that you have the vaccine and you'll need that to get into clubs and to restaurants. Uh, because I'm a man about town, so I'm going to need my Excelsior pass. How are they going to keep track of all this? Like, who is going to be checking this? Some goon? Yeah, so well, look, the same guy who fucking checks my ID to go into some shitty bar and it's like, oh, your license expired. Like, what, yeah. When's the what, last what, time you've been ID'd? I mean, some of these bars, I mean, they, they, they don't care. They like you have to have a license. Oh I have my, to my God. passport. Like they like you, you they'll they'll literally check like a elderly person. They don't like because they're morons. They like these are people who can't be trusted to like do normal like to have judgment. So like their their bosses tell them like no like just you know. <laughs> Molest that old woman and make sure she, you know, she, she, she's who she says she is. Yeah, this isn't a case by case. You check everybody. Right. I just love the idea of somebody looking at you and going, this 17-year-old thinks he's going <laughs> to get over on me. I'm a I, TikTok star. <laughs> I don't know uh, that um, any of this is going to actually be implemented in the way that people want it to. Like, you like... I just, I just think it's going to be pretty sloppy. And I think a lot of people are going to get lazy and go, yeah, whatever, just come in. Right. Well, it depends you know? on the uh, it depends on the outfit, I guess. I mean, because I guess they can be sued if it happens, right? Like they can be. Uh, it's hard to prove where you got it, right? Like it's very difficult to prove how and where you got it. But I guess yeah, sure. the fear is litigious. It's that you could get sued. We should all just. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a good point. Like no, no one. There is no way we should all wear sensors. They should give you a sensor, like if I can, like it goes in your arm and just you know glows if you have COVID. Why can they do that? <laughs> How great would it be if tomorrow, like, Biden comes on TV, he's like, no vaccine mandates. <laughs> Sensors in your arm. <laughs> that glow if you have COVID. He goes, we've heard the civil libertarians. We get it. We're not doing vaccine passports. Sensors in your body that will glow a lovely, like, iridescent blue if you have COVID. 
I mean, look, and then do as you please. People can be, you know, you have informed consent then. You can go, I'm going to avoid this man or I'm going to I'm going to have sex with him. I Either love one. Certain people are afraid of getting chips put in them. You want it. I mean, as long as they're functional. I mean, yeah. you know those things that, like, that Amazon has, those little buttons that you can hit to yeah. order more like Ritz crackers? There will be a period of fun because we clearly are becoming these hybrids, but there's going to be some real... There's going to be some real chaos b- before we're perfected. I, I look people like sh- the, the people who uh, uh, stew it the most, whatever the word would be, uh, who, who poo poo on this uh, this biomechanic stuff are people who could use a, like I could use a mechanical thyroid. It would help yes. me. Yes, you know, like just shove a car like a car battery into my neck and like you know get my metabolism. Well, going. the whole idea is if they do that to you and then you decide to overthrow the government. Uh, with your group of freedom fighters, they can turn you off because they have a they're they've they've hacked you. They can hack you, but they they can't even keep like you know uh, Russian hackers from turning off the dam. Like they're gonna like right. they, I I could hack my, my my neck implant probably. Also, if they give you a neck implant, why would you overthrow the government? Yeah, they're doing me a favor. I'm, I'm in the best shape of my life. He just wants a neck implant. <laughs> it is very interesting. Let's say we're all bionic and we're all running around and like we feel and look great and everything's regulated by a mainframe computer. There's probably no reason to have a revolution. Yeah, like, you know, people want to fuck, they want to eat, and they want to, you know, uh, enjoy a show every once in a while. No, but if you and listen like- to America, this is a country of hardcore freedom fighters. Yeah, but it is because they, like, there's no jobs and there's no shows and there's no, you know, they took away everything good. Yeah. No one was no one was rebelling when we were just, you know, eating steaks all day. And, no like, one cared about freedom when there was Game of Thrones and you could sit inside of Chili's. Yeah. Right. It was nice. Yeah, this, free, this freedom is a, freedom's really, it's, 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 it's what you have when things aren't going great. We used to talk about how, like, you know, back a few years ago even, just like, oh, they'll never rebel because, you know, we have I- the iPod's too good or the iPhone and like and the food's too, like, plentiful. And, like, they're, they're losing the, like, the bare fundamentals of what kept this thing going. Like, right. just feed everyone fat and, yeah. and, and salt <laughs> and, like, fucking, like, you know, and give them a good show every once in a while. And now and they, they can't, can't even keep do that. that going. Well, the woke shit has ruined entertainment, so you don't have yeah. any entertainment. Yeah, I, I can't believe that the CIA. Look, if it is a CIA op, there's the right. most short sight. They have look. Forget like agencies not talking to each other. There's right. different parts of the CIA got to talk to each other. Right. You got this woke division who is like screwing up the mind control division. Yeah, no, it's true. It's the biggest fucking like short play in history where you're going yeah. to like you're going to literally cause a group of people who've been docile their entire <laughs> life. To now start thinking about like serious anti government activity because every time they turn on TV, they're being scolded. Right. They're being. You think there was there some uh, uh, argument going on in some back room where it's like, why did you kill Epstein? They were eating pudding. (laughs) Right. Right. They don't give a shit. They don't don't care. care. (laughs) Now it's a thing. It's a good point. Like, what if Epstein was just convinced to like, Hang three somewhat irrelevant guys. Like he went out and he was like, okay, it was New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson. It was yeah. some creepy physicist and give him some cele- some like low level celebrity and be like, it was uh <laughs> Topher Grace. <laughs> Topher Grace. That's who it was. And then everyone in America would be like, fucking God damn yeah. it, Topher Grace. <laughs> and then and it's it. And then that's it. And then he goes to like some federal prison. But they couldn't chance that. They had to they they, they they had to get rid of him. But do you get sad? I mean sometimes, yeah, sure. But because of the variance, you're also like, I can't go to a therapist. No, I, look, I mean, I how how could I I can't leave my house. I'm worried about getting COVID. This is a it's a, a catch twenty two. Well, do you sometimes wish there was a service where you could get help for your problem? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a miracle. Better help. B E T T E R H L P. Did you say better help? Better help. That sounds, that sounds, that sounds great. Betterhelp.com. You know what they do? It's online therapy. 
You could start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. You're not in crisis. Oh, okay. You can log into your account anytime, day or night, and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling. And financial aid is available. Who are these people? They're better help, and they want you to start living a happier life today. <laughs> I'll try. Visit BetterHelp.com slash TimD. That's Better H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people who've taken charge of their mental health with the experience with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Tim Dillon Show listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash TimD. If you have an online business, you need to ship things, and ShipStation is the way to do it. Have you ever shipped anything online, Ray? Yeah, and I've gotten, you know, it's it, it can be a real hassle, a real burden. You don't know how to do it. I'm, I'm really bad at it. Sometimes I just duct, duct tape a, a, a bunch of, pa of items, and they try to send it in the mail, and it gets lost. It ruins my life. Don't you wish there was, like, a back order, uh, a back office, a digital online back office that kept track of all of your orders, all of your shipments, worked with all the major carriers, allowed you to focus on growing your business while they focused on all of the other very intricate parts? Sure, I'd also love a million dollars, but, you know, how's that going to happen? Well, I'll tell you how to make a million dollars. It's work with ShipStation. No matter how you sell, Shopify, Etsy, your own website. <laughs> ShipStation. <laughs> ShipStation funnels all your orders into one simple Funnels? interface. You can manage from anywhere. Even yourself. Let me ask you, are they, are they going to get nosy about what I'm shipping? I don't think so. It's none of their business. I don't think it is. You'll even get access to amazing discounts with major carriers, UPS, FedEx, USPS. Easily compare carriers and choose the best solution every time. Ray, with ShipStation, small businesses can now access the same rates, usually reserved for Fortune 500 <laughs> companies. Without the content, well, you might be sitting there going, why am I not Coca-Cola? <laughs> and I'll tell you why you're not Coca-Cola. Because of the shipping. It's am I in, uh, Yeah. Am I indemnified in case one of these guys, uh, you know, does something uh, during delivery? Am I, am I going to be liable, my company? I don't know. You talk to a lawyer, but here's <laughs> what I will tell you. It's the shipping, stupid. Remember that quote? From what? Shipping is essential is my point. And <laughs> if you're not doing it appropriately, it's going to be bad for you. Real well, you bad. got a ship product, all right? So, you know, you don't have a choice. So just go with these people. ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the page. Then type in Tim Dillon. That's ShipStation.com. Enter offer code Tim Dillon. Make ship happen. They're discreet. We all have passions that push us to do big things in life, like selling your crafts online, all out of a deep burning love for logistics and order management. Okay, <laughs> no one's passionate about that part. That's why there's ShipStation. Ship more in less time for a lot less money. Just use my offer code, Tim Dillon, to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no-hassle, stress-free shipping. Yeah, I mean... It, it, it's strange because I hear about people. I'm also concerned about the the type of vaccine passport, uh, you know, architecture they could build. Um, oh, I, sure. I get it. We all get it, right? But it's just, it, it's so already down the road. And not to celebrate it coming, but it's so already here with your phone, with tech, with the ability to kick you off the internet, with the ability to really kick you off payment processors, right? It's then you get the guy going, oh, no, I'm on Android. I'm fine. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. It, it's already here, and not that we should celebrate it, and I'm not saying to welcome it with open arms, but it is interesting that people that, like, aren't aware of how down the road we are on a lot of this stuff. Yeah, and look, we were saying for years, and we were late on it, too. It's not like we were looking at with pioneers, but, like, the time for, like, doing anything was, you know, probably 20 years. Just like climate change, probably 20 years ago. <laughs> right. 
We just, we just can't. Like, it, it would be hilarious if we did have a revolution, like, like the day before everything collapses, basically. Well, we see what a revolution looks like, right? It's a guy in a Viking helmet running around taking selfies. That right. was an American revolution. Make no mistake, even though it wasn't a revolution and it was laughable, that was just about the level of revolution <laughs> you're going to see in this country. Adults right. wearing costumes, taking selfies in the Congress and putting them up as their Facebook profile pictures. That's about the level of, of real revolutionary activity you're going to see. Can you imagine like Trotsky photocopying his asshole and just placing right. it on the wall? Right. Right. He's just sitting on a photocopier. Like, what are you doing, Leon? He's like, shut the fuck up. He's taking photocopies of his ass. He's like, we'll show him. I mean, that's kind of where we're at, though. I mean, like, you know, when you look at the January 6th thing and you go, that's that's pretty much the most you're going to see. Because if not, yeah. then why didn't you see more then? Yeah, well, I mean, it's you, you. It's coming from so many different angles too. Is a weird thing. Like you know, the mis like you, you misinformation basically. Like the, the level. I mean, the level of uh, the kind of people you're gonna get for a stop to steal type thing when there really was no any reason to believe it. Like it was right. You're gonna get the the real yahoos. So there's a chance that like you know. When we stop, when we stop saving babies in the hospital, which we will, we'll just, right. we'll, we'll just, you know, we'll just kill babies in the hospital for no, you know, when they get the flu uh, right. or whatever. I'm just saying there's levels of like, of decay that's going to happen despite right. the infrastructure bill. Uh, you might get <laughs> right. a little right. more right. wise. <laughs> it's the infrastructure bill. That's the fix. It's the big right. fix. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm saying you might, you might get a little more of a, of a, of a sampling of a, of, different, of you know, less. Well, you see, it on the, you see it on the West coast, you see Portland, Seattle, you see the Antifa people, you see like people that try to bomb some courthouses well, and try to point, like, yeah. you know, they show up outside of politicians houses and stuff. And, but then the cops go and club them, you know, you when just, was the last time there's an actual terrorist attack that wasn't, you know, I mean, of course the, you know, the, the mass shootings are just individuals who have nothing to do with any kind of, uh, Concerted, you know, conspiracy, but you know, wink. But uh, yeah, but no, actual I mean, terrorist uh, attack. Like, the old, the last terrorist attack was the very not shady Boston Marathon, and before that, it was the very not shady nine eleven, and before right. that, it was the very not shady Oklahoma City bombing. That's a weird thing. We have so much more. Had no idea about anything that was happening either of those times, despite yeah. mountains of evidence <laughs> to the contrary. The fact that they were, they were the half the population of Elohim City. Yeah, I mean, despite <laughs> having successful infiltrations in all of those groups and a, an insane amount of surveillance. Can you infiltrate yourself? What'd you say? Can you infiltrate yourself? <laughs> right. I mean, no, but I mean, they they, they had surveillance capability uh, on, on, on every person who was involved pr pretty much in all of those attacks. M the vast majority of those people. Um, it does they, seem like sketchy. Like those people just seem more serious. Like Waco seemed more serious, and like the the, the Oklahoma City bombing seemed more serious. Like what? Ha it. I mean, I I do kind of take some pause from like you know the, the level of discourse in this country, and things are getting you know weird and cr and bad. But that being said, it does seem more clownish than it used to be. Like every every everyone, even the white supremacists, even the and even the militant comment, everyone just seems more clownish. Yeah, well, because I think I think it's a, I, I think it's dawning on everybody that this doesn't get better, right? Like I think that that's something that people are starting to. There's a capitulation, um, whether it's knowingly or unknowingly, to the new reality, to the new normal, to the idea that the violence is not going to stop. Uh, the you know the 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 pandemic is gonna roll on and be what it's gonna be the uh the gridlock in government and public health policy the edicts and mandates that are handed down that are selectively enforced uh, the politicians that you know have these lavish birthday parties maskless while requiring masks uh, all of this is never going to stop. It's going to stop in maybe a few years when Delta is gone, but then we'll have another problem. Maybe not a public health problem, but we'll have climate issues. Like, you know, these fires in California, you have the serious climate problems, right? right. Um, and then what's going to happen? You're going to have the elite go, stay inside on Wednesday because the fucking air is not good. 
How yeah. dare you? And then what? They're going to be on Wednesday. They're going to be having a luau because right. they're going to have like an oxygen tent up and they're all going to be partying. And that's not going to change because the, the planet is becoming less and less hospitable. So what they're trying to do is figure out ways to keep the lid on things like barely while they can dance and do conga lines and fuck kids on Epstein's Island. Like they're just trying to figure out how to keep it all from bleeding you, out into the street. Do you think and this is purely speculative, but do you think uh, over the next few decades, the level of luxury for these people go declines as well? Like well, what you, what, no. No, I think it'll actually become more technologically advanced. Like they will start purifying oxygen. Like the right. level of luxury is only going, it may decline in the sense that like it may be less important to have an opulent mansion than right. it is to have a well-guarded compound with well, your own I mean. hospital. Yeah. Like you're not going to have a beautiful, you know, yeah, uh, you may just sandstone. Need, you may need yeah. your own ER now. Right. So that may be the new luxury. It may be like yeah. how many wings... Does your house have? It goes, well, we have one wing and it's a cardiac wing. Like we have our doctor, like that may be the new luck. The new luxury may be having like, as these systems fail, which kind of interesting to think about, like as these systems fail, rich people may start thinking, how much of this can we do at home? The new yacht will be a school bus buried underground with guns inside of it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps, <laughs> you know? I mean, I do think then you're going to also have, you know, air quality issues. You're having a lot of air quality issues on the West Coast. Right. And that won't stop. These fires are not going to stop. So yeah, it's, it's, it's already dystopian. But what's the next level after dystopian? Um, just Armageddon, like apocalypse. I mean, you know, flying horse, like horses of the... Grim Reapers? Here's what I don't understand. And maybe this is the vaccine and we'll all realize this eventually. But like me and you have always said, why don't they just start giving people drugs? Yeah. Well, like why? I mean, that, why look, that, that's why the to 90s. be conscious for this? Why, why can't they give you something in the mail that you could take that at least makes this seem more fun? I mean, is it, any, is it a coincidence of the mortgage crisis and the Iraq and Afghanistan wars and the torture coincided with like the you know uh the, the oxycontin crisis no it was, it was like listen yeah we're torturing <laughs> people and blowing up fucking cut who gives a shit get a pool you can afford yeah. it now you can afford to drown in your own backyard <laughs> take but, this um, pill and go in your pool it doesn't look I, I understand the forest is dry can't they like i i, I know it's a i big don't know thing. why they can't i don't know why they can't but it, every year it burns it's dude, they can't they can't bring sprinklers into it and just wet it i know mean, there's like a lack of water but like and aren't you kind of near the ocean just dump ocean water what's it going doesn't on doesn't work there's too many acres of, of wick forest ready to just burn at any moment it's just hot it's dry and hot you get those ho you know those hoses that they make that like yeah. that, that, that irrigate you just, they, they seep out of the sides of the hose. Just get get some of that. They, what, yeah. What's this infrastructure all about then? We don't need another bridge. We just need to you know, get some hoses. I mean, when you drive around Flint, Michigan, or when you drive around any of these places, you go, more and more of the country is probably going to start to look like that. Did They never fixed the water, did they? I don't know. I, mean, I didn't it, drink it, any water. It there. would be amazing if they fix the, do all this infrastructure stuff and they never fix Flint. Well, they probably won't. But right. more and more of America will start to look like those places because people are just going to leave. Cops will leave. Cops go, I don't want to do this fucking gig, right? If they if right. they have any other option. Um, and then you have like, you know, flight. People just leaving. And then, and then the people that are stuck there are going to have to live in these hellish conditions. And then, you know, these become like a no man's land where people just don't go and you know, I think, unfortunately, over the next 20, 30 years, 50 years, whatever, you're just going to see more. And I mean, Sikorsky helicopters keep large percentages of Connecticut employed. If they leave, Connecticut becomes to Detroit, parts of it. Right. So, yeah, and people still worry about the Taliban because, like, oh, like, it, uh, it fosters terrorism. What do you think is going to happen in the inner ring of Detroit? That's right. People don't so, give a uh, shit. Right. People don't, I don't understand. understand. Yeah. What happened to ghost towns? Like people used to, when, when it all dried up, people used to leave. Why isn't, I know people have it rough, but I mean like, 
should we be relocating these people? Get them out. Like, you know, if the whole thing's done, which I get it, we're not making cars anymore. Let's get out. Joe of here. Biden comes out tomorrow. He goes, two things this government's gonna do. Number one. In your arm will be a sensor that will glow <laughs> if you come in contact, if you have coronavirus. Number two, we're doing the Flint Relocation Project, <laughs> where we are, we're randomly picking people to adopt a family from Flint, Michigan. <laughs> yes, we should be relocating these people, but the problem is there's not a lot of places to relocate them to. Like, dude, if you go to Cleveland, Ohio, right? If you go to places like Omaha, Nebraska... If you go to, if you drive around this country enough, the New Yorks and Chicago's and Miami and, and, and LA, these are the anomaly. The vast. But can we just take them? Because like Cincinnati doesn't like. I, look, people are gonna hate me for it, but Cincinnati doesn't really need to be where it is, and neither is Cleveland, and then, and neither is like Omaha. Can we just make like one or two like nice cities out of them? Like make like just bring everyone How together. How do you make the nice cities? You, you you get you get you, you get a couple you get look I'm I'm sorry you get a Foxconn we'll build another Foxconn we're yeah. they gonna do it anyway I yeah. mean and then you, you, you might be like, right you give some you know, you, you have people what we look we got outlaw robots and we got outlaw uh you we know we do need large factories for like people so they could do math and like work yeah. I mean, you look. Drugs used to help. You, you don't think dock workers used to, you know? Uh, of course, do heroin. Of course, they did. No, we like, demonized drugs, and we've demonized um, the idea of like the working man. A working man should get a fair wage to to work in a factory and do speed. The time when this country was built, right, like the eighteen hundreds, when like you know, we 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 fetishize the gilded age and all those guys. Everyone was drunk. That's right. Like, like the, the amount of people, like that's why pro prohibition happened for a reason because everyone was just plastered all the time on like cider or whiskey or whatever. No one was drinking water, and it was the most productive time in American history, except maybe post-war America. But that you know, uh, I'm just saying, like you know, we we used to have a great relationship with drugs and alcohol, and 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 this this puritanical uh, screed that we've gone on has ruined it. Nancy Reagan ruined this country. Nancy Reagan. Just say no. Absolutely. Just say no to jobs. Apparently, I gotta. I gotta get my kitchen floor. I just had tile done. I gotta have it redone because you're right. It looks dirty. There, it looks like streaks of dirt. All, you know, like you, like you just went on a hike in the woods. Looks filthy. It's just the type of tile looks filthy. I don't want. I don't want my house to look like I live in Flint. <laughs> after being like, after having just a discussion about the, how bad the world's getting, I'm like, I gotta have the floor redone. <laughs> but what do you want me to do? I'm just being honest. I mean, is it uh, is it is it ethically sourced tile? I sure, but I I, <laughs> I I have to now. I have to just, you know, I I told the company I don't want to work with them anymore. I, I I said I'll pay you for the materials, but just drop it off at the house. I don't want. I don't like the way the guy laid the tile. I don't like any of it. Oh, so the, the guy who you were talking about on the show yes. last week or whatever, he's the one who laid the tile. No, he hired some guy. I just didn't love it. But it's okay. really more the actual tile looks dirty. Yeah. No, the first thing, I, I thought it was, the, you know, you were on FaceTime. I thought it was FaceTime. But no, it, it's like streaks of like, you know, it looks no, like mud. No, it's bad. It's really disgusting. These people are disgusting. And, yeah. um, but they, that's a look down here, like dirty kitchen floor. That's kind of a look here. This is like ranch hands and, you know, people are just... Is this the culture. same thing as where you were living before? Like everyone's pretending to have horses? No, these people are legit, those people. These people okay. are real the deal, you know, as opposed to pretending. After spending last summer on the sidelines, we're all ready to get back out there and make this year's lounge cheese in an epic one. Bespoke Post is here to take your sand. Sun and Surf came to the next level. You like getting presents in the mail. Have you ever tried the box of awesome? Here's what you get. You get a different box every single month with cool stuff, Ray. Each box costs only $45, and it has $70 worth of gear inside. Gear? What kind of gear? Anything you want. Batman gear? All kinds of stuff. If you go like outside, Batman. they have things for you to go outside with. Like <laughs> a knife? <laughs> Sometimes, yes. <laughs> Travel, outdoor gear, summer styles, grooming goods. Breezy summer styles. So maybe they'll give you like a breezy summer style shirt and a knife. This sounds like that movie Battle Royale. Where everyone gets a different weapon. <laughs> How cool was that movie? That was a great movie. So maybe this is pretty damn cool. 
<laughs> it's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel any time. You get a different box every month. You understand? Are you with All me? Right, so a new box. You look like you're getting confused. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how, how many guns do I need? <laughs> They're not sending you guns. <laughs> They send you really cool stuff. You can tell them what you like, and they'll send you all kinds of cool stuff. It's a fun... It's, it's a fun surprise. What is this? Where do we live? <laughs> this is the future. <laughs> Hold on. It's free to sign up. Skip a month. Cancel any time. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code Tim Dillon at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Tim Dillon for 20% off your first box. Keeps hair care. You need to keep the hair. It's there, it's a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. Convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You do not have to leave your home. Low-cost treatments start at $10 per month, and Keeps offers generic versions. Discreet packaging and proven results. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, are you? I mean, I think that, that ship has sailed. Well, you should have used Keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tim Dillon. Receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tim Dillon to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tim Dillon, first month free. And if you don't believe me, I'll, there's a website I can send you to. <laughs> <laughs> Is Brett Weinstein on it? Yeah. Supplemental. Dude, how funny would it be if they had you on the show, <laughs> like, like Brett and Heather, and you just sat like between them and just yeah. like played with your... Teat as they talked. My teat. <laughs> Hello. Just played with your nipples. Yeah. And you go, you go, I have a nervous tick. <laughs> Can I eat? Keeps is so good. Keeps is uh important here because you want everyone wants to keep their real hair. I'd love some hair. Will it grow back hair? You need to keep the hair you have right now. I mean, you know, it's okay. I'll I'll start I'll start taking it. Dude, Haiti is getting rocked by earthquakes. They, they're the unluckiest country out there. Kabul is on the brink. What do you say, Ray? Kabul is on the brink. Look, it's been, I don't understand. It's been 20 years since 9-11. Are we re really still worried about them doing terrorism? I mean, look, if they're not morons and they learn their lesson, like, hey, it took us 20 years to get this back. Maybe we don't have next Bin Laden hanging out over here. But they didn't really. Well, they took the country over. But if I was the Taliban, I'd be like, look, the one thing we don't do is, is have terrorist camps. That's right. If I ran a Taliban, that's what I would do. Because now we're back in charge. They can't yeah. look. But then the Taliban's gonna be like, but they're telling us the US is telling us that we should have <laughs> terrorist camps. Don't no, fall for it again. Us. Yeah. They're telling us. <laughs> that's the thing. Don't don't fall for it. Don't great point. Don't <laughs> fall for it. You <laughs> fell for it in the 80s. You kept falling for it through the 90s. Like, when we tell you we want to train and arm radical elements of your society, <laughs> don't go in for that. I mean, has there ever been a country, maybe, for, I don't want to like, play a typical, you know, uh, whatever, but, you know, France is, it gets accused of laying down for the Nazis. But, like, I'm saying, Afghanistan, they, they, don't, they don't seem to be doing anything. Uh, at least all the American officials are saying, that, like, we trained them. Like, we like we did all this. Like, they're not doing anything to stop this. The Afghan, you know, provisional government, whatever they call it, or regular government, or the armed forces. of. I mean, they, we've been training them for 20 years. At what point are we, like, you know, you got to defend your own country? Maybe they just want yeah, the Taliban. I mean, it's a great point. Michael Tracy said on Twitter, it's like, how have we built this thing that collapses in like a day? Yeah. What like, we how do? does this I mean, work? Maybe maybe we were just spending the whole last 20 years like growing opium. I also don't think we ever want any of this to work. Yeah. Well, we, 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 we want a reason to go back. Yeah. Well, we, we, want, we want it to collapse. I mean, that's, maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's the play is that like, look, we're going to like, we're going to go back, but we need a year or two where it gets real bad, where like we can point to like, look, they're making the women wear dog collars again. We ha we can't <laughs> allow this. Like, you know, it was too good for too long in Afghanistan. 
Yeah. It's very strange, and I don't know what's going to go down. I just know that we've got really a few peaceful years left on this planet before it gets a hell of a lot worse. Um, and uh, I just, I, it's tough to tell people that served the country, like the people that are joining the military now, it's like, God bless them. I mean, it's still better than working at Walmart, I guess. I guess you're right. That's a good point. There's not like, he's not, he's not like getting a job at Ford. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's because now there's we now know like it's the proof is really out there that like nothing is is going to work. No, I mean, like, like should the armed forces Iraq. should the armed forces now just have a sign that says you will die in vain. <laughs> like there's I mean, no way there's no way you won't die in vain. Unless somehow, like, you save a bait on one of these missions that makes sense to no one, that's doomed to failure, maybe you, like, save a baby, and that's your good, but pretty much. Or you're Chris Kyle, and you shoot the baby. <laughs> right. Dude, so Ben, I mean, Ben uh, goes out, you know, they have friends in Texas, and, like, all the people here in Texas think Chris Kyle's, like, a hero. Like, they, they like... They believe like everything, you know, like right. they're just like, they're like, you ever see the movie American Sniper? <laughs> you ever see it? You ever see that movie Zero Dark 30? <laughs> what? It's a clown show. It's a, it's a. They all hate, they all hate Jesse Ventura. I think he's a, an American scum. Yeah. So what was, he's dead now, he, right? Chris Kyle Is he dead? Accused, like, Chris Kyle basically in his book said that Jesse Ventura was like at some SEAL funeral, Navy SEAL funeral, <laughs> and just like saying the guy deserved to die. <laughs> and like, and he got in some fight with him. And like, which is like, even, uh, look, I know he goes on TV and talks about the Loch Ness monster, but I mean, the guy was like basically a SEAL. Like, I don't, I don't think he's like Jesse is Ventura. Is Jesse Ventura alive or dead? Oh, he's alive. Okay. Yeah. He's an interesting guy to get on the show. Oh, he'd be great to talk to. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, look. Just don't ask him about the harp gun. He gets he gets a little. Uh, things get a little hazy when you when you talk about stuff like that. But why? He, I think he knows. He's just like he doesn't really have a. I, I, he casts a wide net. What the weather gun? Is that what you mean by the harp gun? I'm just saying he doesn't really have a strong filter. I think he wanted to fill that show up with like you know, topics. So he like, made you some know, good points about about 9/11 and some other weird shit. No, he does. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just you know, but then they he might start <laughs> the going off about like, gun. but the harp <laughs> gun is the real problem. Right. There is a COVID gun. <laughs> You're like Jesse. <laughs> stay on, stay on, folks. Stay focused. I take ivermectin in my asshole. It's not gay. <laughs> He's um, just going off about Navy SEALs. Navy <laughs> SEALs all deserve deserve what they get. <laughs> SEAL Team Six was a bunch of pussies. <laughs> Bin Laden's an American fucking hero. Would, how great would it be if he just went completely insane? I love Osama Bin Laden and the Bin Laden family. He's just doing like praying to Mecca. Yeah. The only God is Allah. The only true God is Allah. He should open up. We, we should like, we should, we should see how far we can get. Telling him we're like big investors and that we want right. to open up a conspiracy theory restaurant with him. Like, a re <laughs> like conspiracy Fridays. You'd get a meeting. Like you'd yeah. absolutely get a meeting if like you were like, Jesse, we really want to open up like a conspiracy th theory, conspiracy themed restaurant like an Applebee's or a Friday's or an Outback. You know, but instead of it's like, like but, boomerangs yeah. and kangaroos on the wall, we have like, like syringes, pictures of Building Seven, and fucking yeah. like, you know, the Northwoods nachos are my favorite. Like things <laughs> like that. MK Ultra Feast. Yes, MK Ultra. <laughs> I mean, we. All, I always wanted to do a conspiracy theory line ice creams. We talked about it on the Patreon, but ice cream right. is so hard. You can, can't do it. You can't ship it. You can't make any money. I've always wanted to make my own line of ice cream. That conspiracy hot sauce, maybe. No, I, I'm sick of the sauces. I can't taste anything right now. Food is still good, which is how you know that, like, you, you have a problem with food. Is it when you can't taste anything? Food's like, still, you're still looking forward to it. Yeah. People are like, how can you eat? I'm like, I can eat. You just don't taste it. You just keep eating.
It's but nice and chewy. I'm, I'm, I'm eating a lot healthier now. I'm just eating you know, nothing inflammatory because of the COVID, which I think in a few days I'll test negative. Um, but the, uh, what you call it? The, um, yeah, I've always wanted to make a, a line of ice creams and sell them, but it's very expensive to a very small select group of people. Like we'd yeah, have to literally, yeah. we'd probably have to charge something stupid for a pint of ice cream. 50 bucks? Something like that. People might buy it. You got, you know, I think you're right. Well, you had a great, like we had some good ideas about like Jeffrey egg cream where we'd have like, we'd have like an egg cream style ice cream with like, um, like a, a fudge ripple and then like little chocolate girls. Or we'd have like the uh, sweet, um, jet fuel doesn't melt sweet cream. And we'd have like a 9-11 themed ice cream. Like we, you know, we but had a whole thing. Con con controlled demo licorice. Something like that. Joan Beignet Ramsey, which had beignets right. <laughs> and it had a chicory coffee swirl. It was a New Orleans theme, even though they're not from there, but you know. Yeah. But you know, we, 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 we have, but I think if we got Jesse Ventura, like got his people and we're like, you Does know. Does he still have people? I mean, he's just some guy now, isn't he? Does how he do have, you like, start a business? It's a great question. Like all these people that are like small business owners, how do you even start a business like in this cut, like how much can you need so much capital to just start anything? Oh, well, you mortgage your house or your parents' house. It's usually how right. it's, I mean, for a small, small business, like, you right. know, uh, and it'll fail. Like, you know, I mean, like anyone who like lasts more than two but years. Here's like, my no, thing. They, Can we take like a hundred grand and just start a coffee house that's going to fail, but it'll be hilarious? Yeah. I mean, like, uh, do you know what I mean? Like, can we just grand? lease a space and start like a coffee house and like literally do that, like put crazy shit on a wall. Like, can we do all of that? Oh, no. for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, hundred percent. But not there's all the legal City, things about hiring people. But what if we just hire our friends, like Devin and Ida? And yeah, I mean, basically, you just kind of you know call it. Uh, you 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 just, you just call it. Uh, you hire them as models, basically. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So you can't, you know, they, they just work for hire. Yeah. It's not, it's not what like, it's not what like Hooters does or someone or. Cause I, what, if, what if we really could succeed with like a restaurant? We just don't even know it. Yeah. I mean, just a bucket of, a bucket of spaghetti. Just real, real, real trash. I mean, just, you know. <laughs> no, what if I'm not kidding. Like, what if we went to like Huntsville, Alabama and opened a restaurant called bucket of spaghetti? <laughs> no, like hear me it out. Work. Where you would get buckets of spaghetti. Yeah. And like different sauces, like there'll be yes. a pesto sauce, there'll yes. be a, oh, no, a peanut you, butter sauce. There, what'd you say, peanut butter sauce? Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Um, right. Peanut butter and jelly pasta. Yeah. Bucket. Bucket. Honestly, we shouldn't even be talking about this. Someone's going to steal this. This is a good idea. Wiley Dufresne used to do peanut butter pasta at WD50 in New York. It was a very like uh, conceptual restaurant. Very oh, really? Good. I think he did. Well, yeah. here's, here's the thing. We, 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 don't, we don't have utensils. You have to just eat out of the bucket, like a, like a pig, like a trough. <laughs> yeah. What if we had something called the trough, where like you had to put your face in it? And eat it? Yeah. I mean, we had, it would be really fun if we just if we we handcuff your hands behind your back to the chair, and so you, like you just you just have to like you're in a pie eating contest. I don't know if insurance would go in for that. <laughs> no, but I I think like I'm like not even kidding. Like I think like if you just had a restaurant called B Bucket. And it was like yeah. bucket of nachos. It's called Johnny Buckets. <laughs> Johnny Buckets. <laughs> and anything you want, it's in a bucket. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, let me get, and you, you could choose. Like, let me get three chicken wings, uh, a quarter pound of pasta, some, yeah. some, red, some peanut butter and jelly. And they just put it in a bucket and just match it together. Yeah. Bucket. It's like, it's, like, it's, like, it's, it's like Stone Cold Creamery. Yeah. The drink. Yeah. Cold Stone Creamery. The drinks are in a bucket. Everything's yeah. in a bucket, and it's cardboard. It's better, bucket. it's better for yeah, the environment. Just, no plastic. Every, yeah, you, you put the drink, the soda, like in the bucket together, so it's all one big slop. Yeah, it's bucket. It's bucket life. Yeah, and and it'd be and it, and we'd sell shirts, and the shirts would say, "Fuck it, I'm getting a bucket." <laughs> I wonder if KFC does that. Fuck it, I'm getting a bucket. Probably not. They should. I mean they they think they're they think they're being a reference, but they're you know they're too much of a it's cowardice. Um, tell people where they can 
find you. You listen to the Cump Podcast. Uh, it's on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. Very funny show. Uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Ray Cump. Um, are you enlisting from, in the military to f fight? Uh, how are you I, letting I, them lose Kabul? I've sent them. Should you know, we start tweeting at POTUS? Why are you letting them lose Kabul? <laughs> <laughs> this is Saigon all over again. <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> it's going to be bad. Yeah. I mean, you know, Russia and China day, are standing by them. Why? Why aren't they? Why? Why do they hate us so much? Like China at this point, with the Uyghur, Mus Uyghur Muslims or whatever, shouldn't they like? Uyghur. Doesn't China get any blame in this world anymore? Why are we the great Satan all, all the you time? You know why? I think China just kind of just does it and shuts up about it. Like we 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 would yeah. do that to the Uyghur Muslims, but then like we'd make like a movie about how like we're like they're working at the North Pole. Right? You know what I mean? We do a movie about how they're like Santa's helpers, and then people would find out the reality, and they'd be like, "Yeah, they those Muslims they gave them jo jobs at the toy shop," and they'd be like, "No, they didn't. They tortured the shit out of them." So when you find out what we're really doing, it's so strikingly different from what we're purporting to do that people get upset. Whereas China's just like, "Yeah, I guess the people got uh, they got got they got right. tortured." And there's something, I don't know, maybe there's something refreshing about that. Probably. TimDillon.com, Tim Dillon Comedy. We're, we'll be back out on the road soon, folks. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you. Go follow Ray Comp. Thank you.